because I think this is very key. And what I have seen in a state, let's take Alaska, are we need to know where our glory altars are. So you need to look throughout your state and say, here's a glory altar. Now, with that, you're going to probably find there's apostolic authority somewhere. There is incredible worship and incredible prophetic anointing. And I, I wish that every state would have at least 12 areas like this. Mm -hmm. And I decree that over Alaska, you're going to find your 12 glory altars. Now, let me, let me share something, a little teaching for a moment, because one of the things I've been pondering is how uh, there's this shift in the glory realm that is happening and we have to be very aware of this shift in the glory realm. Our, and, and our biggest enemy is the last move of the glory, or what God has done. But what you're doing is the right way to press into the new, because you're taking the words from the past, and all the prophetic words that have been said, and those are what you, you go to war with. And that's all the way through the word of God. They would bring the word that had been spoken and bring it into present time. Now, this is where Alaska becomes so important. Past, present, future. Then they would bring it into present time. Then they would project it in a new way forward. See, that's the future. So I really believe, and I want to loose this right now over you, there's an anointing coming on Alaska that will see the future. There's an anointing to uh, assimilate the past into the present and then project the future. I say coming out of Alaska will be a word for an entire nation to come. And it will say, this is what is coming. It will be like when Paul Revere began to ride from the East Coast and say, the Red Coats are coming. Alaska is going to be riding and saying, this is what's coming, America. Be ready for what is ahead. Amen. Amen. Now, let me share a few points that all of you can grab hold of on this glory ship. Uh, first of all, he number one, when you start looking at the glory, the best example is in Joshua 3, because he shifts how we have to respond to the glory. They had come out of Egypt. They had been in the wilderness 40 years. God had provided for them. But remember, this year is about divine recovery, and it's about opening up new supply lines. Then all of a sudden, when he was ready for them to go into the promised land, he removed their model from last season's glory. He removed the fire, and he removed uh, the cloud. And all of a sudden, they were going to have to learn a new way to follow the glory of God. Now, that is probably the very hardest point that you have to overcome as you move into this new move. That's why you want to look at everything God has done, like like the book of Deuteronomy is, where Moses reiterated everything that had been done and then step back for three days and wait until God shows you what you're looking for for the future. It's very, very key that we're doing that. And so, and then of course, they had to follow the ark, they had to follow the leadership, and they had they, if they went to war without the ark, they lost. And I believe the Lord is going to really start requiring us to operate like this as we go forward. And then the other model that you find is David's tabernacle. And, and when you think about that, see, uh, it, it wasn't legal yet for David to do what he did. When they were still under Mosaic rule, but he removed uh, the uh, barrier 
and the veil that would keep people from going into and worshiping around the ark in his tabernacle. And I believe you're going to have to remove every barrier that is keeping anyone from coming in in this new move of God. And David, of course, David's tabernacle, that's where they would gain their war strategies and they would gain, they would worship. And from that, they would gain revelation over how to advance. But it was not anything or any model like it because the only model they had and the only model they still have now, a lot of times in Israel, is the Mosaic law. But any legalistic structure of who can enter into this move or not enter in has to be removed. Uh, then in Isaiah 6, the prophet really shares something. And this goes back to that angelic uh, chart I showed you. In Isaiah 6, uh, Isaiah saw the Lord when he saw King, King Uzziah die. And what it and in that the effects of a death of a political figure opened his eyes to a realm of God he had never experienced before, and he saw the seraphim and cherubim, and he saw the glory in a way that he had never seen the glory. So I believe you're going to have a political anointing to prophesy from Alaska over the future of the politics of America. I believe I loose that, and you're going to have to get beyond any thought process of good, bad, Democrat, Republic, and you're going to have to prophesy into and say, this is who God is ready to ra raise up. This is the leader that for the generation ahead that the Lord is saying to America that it must have if it, if it is to survive. And so I believe that anointing is coming on you. I believe there is a resurrection miracle anointing that will blow down from Alaska into the lower uh, states. Uh, now, the other an angel that was related to y'all that you're going to have to some way think about was the one uh, in the area of Hawaii because there's some dynamic of Hawaii and Alaska that must align in days ahead for this new move of God, that the last becoming first as we go into this next move of God. And see, there was a ruling angel uh, on the other side of the Hawaiian islands, and there was a ruling angel where... Uh, where Maine and Alaska met, and those two angels were in communication. And so you want to look, you want to draw that, and then draw uh, 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 like a triangle, and you're going to see a territory that you have great effect over all the way into the mainland. I, I, I think you'll see it uh, very clearly. Another thing is, we are going to shift from just learning into activation and doing. In this glory realm, all of a sudden, because uh, Mary, you know, we came through the prayer movement and we prayed so many things, but a lot of things we have prayed, God is going to say, and don't pray it, activate it. And mm -hmm. so you're going to go back and you're going to look at those things and you're not going to pray them, you're going to say and they're going to become active in the earth realm. And I really believe Alaska is key in that. And you're going to have to really review the prophecies like you're doing and then prophesy beyond what you have already heard. And then I see new types of gatherings. They're prayer watchman gatherings, but they are linked into an ascension that causes the glory of God to just spread like wildfire from these glory altars. 
And so this is a time that we are shifting into this new glory anointing. And I decree over Alaska that you are in a new leadership capacity to help us shift. Amen.